Are we gonna upset Mother Nature? Why should we upset Mother Nature? We're gonna steal her job. I see plaster of Paris. Yeah, I think we need to cover the leaf in the plaster of Paris to make our first impression. And I'm gonna use this one. I think I'm gonna go with the littler of the two. Cool. Two parts plaster of Paris to one part cold water. So, all right, so we've got about five minutes before this starts to harden, I no guess. No pressure. I think mine's gonna be a lot easier than yours. I just really don't want it to go over the edge. Okay, so why do you think that would be bad? I think it would encapsulate the leaf, and then when I go to pull it out, it would be not possible. Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna put something under mine. Yeah so that I get this shape that I like. So I think if we just do a really light coat. Just build up from there. I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea. For a piece of wood? Oh, that's kind of cool actually. Yeah, don't gonna... touch it. Okay, I'm all done. Okay. Okay, it's been, I don't know, a couple hours I want to say. Something like that. Yeah, I mixed up another batch. The part that's been dried and now the new batch that's going on top. And so our thought is that if we can just- Layer it up. It'll make it sturdy. So this is the third layer, right? Third layer. All right, hopefully this will be enough to give these things some structure. So the first layer we put on around noon, and then we waited till about two, and did the second layer, and now we're around five o'clock here for the third layer. All right, these, we let them sit overnight, and let's see what happened. Ooh. Yeah, the tips are definitely the weak point. Okay, but that's a leaf. That's really cool. Nice. Now, this is the object we want, but we don't want it in this super flimsy plaster of Paris. So we need to build a silicone mold of these and then recast them in more durable material. Adding the clay like this, first off, it helps keep the plaster Paris in place and really gives it some support. It's gonna allow me to cut down on the amount of silicone I'm gonna have to pour, and it's gonna give me a better shape for the actual mold, because I don't need all of this undercut material here. Despite all my rage, I am still just a leaf in a cage. I think that's, I think that's how that goes. Um, Mrs. Brown's maple leaf and my walnut leaf clay all around the edges to try to cut down on the amount of silicone that's going to be required. You can see how high up the leaf goes. The sides are almost four inches high. You made your leaf so dynamic, it's going to be hard to cast. Sorry. I'm just going to hit it with a bunch of mold release. I'm sure that's healthy for breathing. <laughs> a few videos back I said I was all out of silicone mold making material and then this came in the mail. So huge thank you to the Just Resin folks. We also use a lot of dyes and pigments from them. Uh, they make really cool dyes and pigments. Stir it for like three minutes or until you get a sort of uniform color. That's a lovely lavender color. I think we should do the maple leaf first. <laughs> uh, something's poking up out of the top of Lake Lavender. 
<laughs> Looks like a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> I'm just glad the mold hasn't like popped apart from the pressure. Right. Pop, 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 pop. Got the little nubbin sticking up. Oh. I'd be a rebel and start with part B. I feel like it might not be the reason. <laughs> oh, that was the silicone, I swear it. Can you get a shot of this? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is delightful. I don't think we can use any of this footage. <laughs> Have to put a sensory warning. Well, I didn't know that part moved. It's a pretty color. It is a really pretty color. That's the nice thing about those. Those are very satisfying. That's nice. It's like popping your bubble gum. Exactly. All right. So let's see if we can cover up Nessie. Nessie in Lake Lavender here. You're good. Yeah, you want it thick enough, right? Right. I've got 48 ounces left. It's making that sound. I really want to pop that bubble. Do it! Oh, a new one grew. <sighs> okay, can we go to bed now? Yes. Okay. <gasps> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. There's usually not this much. Ha 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 when we break apart bowls. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice. Nice. We knew that yours was going to be the more complicated of the two. Oh, nice. Have your clay stuck. A much smaller mold than the Lake Lavender one. <laughs> so it is coming free. I don't know why, but the plaster didn't completely release from the silicone. We did the hardest one first. It is possible. This took about 30 to 40 minutes to get all the plaster bits and clay out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and work on this one. Both of these molds have been cleaned up. This mold concerned me a lot. I did end up casting some urethane resin in there. I had to make a number of slits in the mold just to get it out. Really, really hard to get out. What color were you thinking about going for yours? I think I'm gonna go with either an orange or a yellow. Mini, mini. My Nemo. Uh, this one is their fluorescent. It's the Sunkiss. The resin we're going to use today is Total Boat, the high performance resin. And we know it's 14 ounces because we've already made a mold of this. A chain of rubber bands. It doesn't need to be a ton. Luckily the mold's really thick so it shouldn't shift. Oh, wow, that barely fits. It does. It just barely fits in there. So you don't want to pour this in? Nope. I'll pour it in. It's a pretty color. It looks like honey. It does look like honey. It's it? sticky like honey. And now for this small one, I'm just going to use a, a transparent green pigment. I'm trying to get the same color as the um, wand that I made. I really liked that color. Why do I keep pushing it? Mine won't fit in a pressure pot. It's funny, yours is a bigger mold, but the shape of mine is too large to fit. So. Oh, 
Actually. Looks perfect. <laughs> when does that ever happen? Okay, this is a little nerve-wracking. Because if I can get it to flex enough, I should be able to get this back part out. Nice and easy does it. Nice and easy does it every time. Okay. Whoa. Woo. Wow, okay, that's out. And I'd say it looks pretty good. All right, it's actually really cool looking. This one definitely could have benefited from some time in the pressure pot. You can see it's got a lot of little bubbles on it. So I got the bandsaw tilted. Okay, uh, we've got foam brushes, we've got, oh, gloves, that's important. I trimmed on the bandsaw and sanded my leaf so that it didn't have much of that base left. You wanted the base on there. I think it looks like it's been carved out of something. Stone, amber. It doesn't really stick to the resin that well. No, I have a theory behind what I'm doing. To have bright colors underneath so that when I then do the veining of the black mm -hmm. and wipe away, you'll see the bright colors underneath. Cool. The plaster of Paris would have just absorbed this. The resin's not as porous as that, so it actually has to dry on there, which means you have a lot of working time to remove the paint if you don't like it. There's still time. I can still trim these edges up for no. you. I can still, I can still fix all this. Back edges off. on the side and see if I can just get that down into the veins here. Shove it into the little cracks and then kind of just If you walk around a forest, all the leaves don't look the same. And as you said, the, the really fun part is the process, you know, making these choices, whatever they are. Uh, what have we done to my bench? <laughs> Looks really cool. I'd like to keep working on my one. Yeah. And as you can see, we've both settled on a final look here and we're just gonna put a little Mod Podge right over the top. It's always scary because it goes on white, but it will dry clear. I think it's the prettiest one, no feds. We haven't even seen the others yet. It definitely has that fall leaf feel to it with the browns and the yellows that you've got going on there. It ended up looking really cool. And uh, the dynamic pose that you gave to it definitely shows through here. I think it looks like a leaf captured in time. Nice. Before we made this one, we made a pour with white urethane resin to get all of the clay out. Brown stuff is actually the modeling clay that got stuck in the different crevices. And I think it looks kind of like it's been carved out of marble. It's carved back in the day and now it's growing moss on it. That's cool. Now mine was a walnut leaf. I didn't want it to look like a walnut leaf. So I painted it like something I would expect to see in the tropics. And I think this is something that most people could do. So if you, you know, even, even if you don't feel comfortable with the whole casting process and the pouring, just taking and getting a plaster of Paris cast off a leaf 
and painting it would be a fun process. And we might have gotten a tad bit carried away with making these. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. That helps us out a ton. And we will catch you next time.